Today I'll be talking about the app critique interview. The app critique interview is one of the most common types of interviews for product design and UX design roles. In this interview type, basically what happens is that either you or the interviewer will choose an app and you critique it. So it sounds pretty easy, but a lot of people get tripped up on it because when it comes time to critiquing the app, they don't have a good framework for how to organize their thoughts. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about what people look for in the interview, then I'll share my framework and then do an example. So hope you enjoy. This interview assesses for three different things, product thinking, attention to detail, as well as communication. We're going to dive into each of these in detail. The first category is product strategy. How well can you analyze and understand the overall strategy and purpose behind the app? Here you're really putting yourselves in the shoes of the people who created the app and trying to get a sense of why they did things a certain way. One of the most important things to do here is to be able to identify areas for improvement from both a UX and a business perspective. So a lot of times the interviewer will ask you, what feature would you add next? And this is a really important question to answer because they're trying to gauge your understanding of product strategy as well as business strategy. The next category is attention to detail. In attention to detail, this is really where you want to showcase your visual design foundations. So are you able to identify visual design elements that you think could be improved? And can you also describe specific ways that you would improve those elements? From a design systems perspective, they might want you to notice inconsistencies in a design system and point those out. It's really, really important here to also describe ways that you might improve these elements because it's a lot easier to point out something that looks wrong than to figure out how you would improve it. And finally, most importantly, we have communication skills. In this one, it's all about how effectively you can express your ideas and critique in a constructive and objective way, being able to explain why you think something is so important to showing that you have strong communication skills. One note here is that it's very, very important, like I mentioned earlier, to always suggest potential solutions and improvements while you're doing this critique so that you showcase that you have ideas to offer. Before we move on to the framework and the example, I want to remind you that the most important thing to remember in this interview type is to focus on the why. So for every point you make, you should always have a reason why to back it up. Highly recommend avoiding very subjective sentences like, I just don't like this color, or I find this confusing. For example, if you don't think a color is working, try to focus on something objective. So this blue is not effective on this page because it lacks enough contrast for people to read the text on top of it. That's an example of giving a reason why. At a high level, here's the framework I like to use. So first, it's important to set the context. Before you start listing issues with the app, it's important to zoom out a little bit and answer questions like, what problem is the app trying to solve and who is the target audience? Next, I typically choose a flow. A flow is any common task that the user needs to complete. So for example, if you're critiquing the DoorDash app, your flow might be a user is ordering food to their house. Walk through the flow and discuss both the good things and the bad things that you notice from an interaction, visual design, and strategy perspective. When you're talking about these things, make sure, again, to always have a reason why. If you have additional time, you can either repeat the second point here, so choose another flow, or you can do a high level critique of the app's design system. So for a design system critique, it's really about noting visual inconsistencies across the app and saying how you would solve these inconsistencies. Also, sometimes you might want to mention why a designer might have broken away from the design system. So here's the high level framework, and now we're going to dive into a specific example. When I'm practicing for an app critique interview, I like to use a tool called Mobbin to practice because Mobbin is a website that has screenshots and prototypes of apps on iOS, Android, and web. It makes it really easy for me to browse through many different apps and look for the ones that I want to critique. I decided I'll be critiquing ZocDoc today. So again, before you get started with the critique, it's important to set the context. So ZocDoc is an app that is helpful for people to find doctors that fit their insurance. And I think it's interesting because ZocDoc actually has two different target audiences. There are the patients and there are the doctors as well. Patients are looking for doctors and doctors are looking to grow their practice by finding more patients and advertising their services. And so ZocDoc kind of has two different target audiences. For today, I'm going to focus on the patient side of things because that's what I'm most familiar with. So what I would do next is I would go through all these flows on this page and pick one to critique. So I think searching for a doctor is probably one of the most common flows. Go ahead and click on that. And Mama makes it really nice because they have prototypes of all these common flows so you can actually click through them. 
now that we've picked a flow, we can go through it and critique it in depth. So I'm going to go ahead and talk out loud as if I'm doing the interviews. So here I'm on the homepage of the ZocDoc app. One of the things I'm noticing is that I really like these top search specialties. I love the illustrations. They give the app a really friendly vibe and make finding a doctor feel more approachable and less intimidating. One visual design that I'm noticing is that there are some extra margins on the left and right side of the page here. They don't align with the card up here. And so what I would recommend is stretching these cards out a little bit so that they fit into the space right here. Above here, I'm noticing that there is a really big search area. So I'm assuming this is the primary action that most people will take when they open the app. So they would probably go in, search for something that they're looking for. So here in this example, you can search for an orthopedic consultation and it'll show up here and then you can look for people near you and also pick a specific date. And so I think this is a pretty common flow. It seems pretty standard. One thing I also like is that they say, I'll choose my insurance later. That's often a really annoying thing. I like, I always have to look for my insurance card. And so it seems like a very intentional decision to make this an optional step until you've kind of filled out everything else. After I press search, I'm noticing I get the survey to ask me more information about the pain I'm experiencing. One thing that I like about this is that it feels like my experience will be a little bit more tailored toward what I'm experiencing right now. And so maybe they'll find me a doctor that is specialized in the area that I'm experiencing pain. One thing I'm noting is that these illustrations, although they do share a similar color palette, feel pretty different from the illustrations down here. And so I'm curious about the decision there. I think these make sense here because the space is a lot smaller and so you need smaller iconography. But also I'm curious how much time it took the designers to make all these custom illustrations because there's so many different doctor specialties. I wonder if every single specialty has a custom set of, set of icons because I feel like that would take a really long time. And so anyway, I appreciate the work that the designer did to get these all there. It's a kind of an interesting style because it looks like they overlaid two different shapes and used multiply. So I think it's a pretty creative way to create a little system. Each of these has a little circle to show where the pain is. And so it seems cool to me. Okay, anyway, so back to the flow. So I'm noticing that they have an option for you to skip and show results as well. I think that's also really great. You can always skip through the flow. So we're gonna go ahead and select foot and ankle and then click see providers. Here are the search results. It looks like there's 30 providers available. One of the things I'm noticing is that it's kind of hard to decide which person to pick. So it looks like there are like reviews. This is a little bit overwhelming, these cards. So there are these reviews. There's also like a bunch of text here. It's like new patient appointments, highly recommended, excellent wait time. I'm kind of curious if any of the doctors here have any like negative reviews. It seems like everything is pretty high. One thing I'm noticing is that if I am in a rush, they do highlight the upcoming appointments, which I think is pretty great. So here, if I wanted to get an appointment for like tomorrow, they would show up here. So that's pretty awesome. And then you can also see all the availability as well. Another thing I'm noting is that there is a lot of yellow on the page. So here there's like this yellow header thing. And then there's also like the yellows here for me to tap on. And then there's yellow for sponsored. And so I think if I was a designer on the team, I might consider on highlighting the section up here because I find that the yellow here might be distracting from the action items below. One thing I'm noticing is that these cards are pretty overwhelming to look at. And so I think if I were to improve them, I would recommend probably simplifying them a little bit so that there's less information. So if I was going to simplify it, I would likely remove the address because I feel like the address doesn't tell me that much. The distance away is enough to show me that it's close enough or far away enough from me. Another thing is that here, the new patient appointments, highly recommended, excellent wait time. I think this is meant to help me make a faster decision, but it looks like most of the doctors here have these tags. And so I wonder if there's a way to highlight like the most specific thing that they're known for. So maybe if it's excellent wait time, that could be the one thing that's highlighted. Or if maybe they're really open to new patients, that could be the one thing that's highlighted. I think having all three elements doesn't seem super helpful. The next thing that I'm noticing is that there are these cards here to help me book the appointment quicker. I think that's really great if I'm in a rush. And so I would probably leave these here for now, even though they are very overwhelming in terms of size, because I think most people will use this really quickly to book an appointment. I think it's kind of interesting because there are two different use cases, I guess, for a patient. There's like the urgent thing where it's like, I need to see someone tomorrow. And there's also something more like a general checkup where you're not in as much of a rush. And so I think I'm assuming that the team probably is balancing those two different use cases where if you want to see a doctor immediately, you will probably want to press one of these 
immediate buttons here. Whereas if you want to see a doctor that's really renowned and very um, good at what they do or very popular, you might be more open to a doctor who has less availability up front. Overall, I think the flow is pretty good. It's not super confusing. It's pretty straightforward. However, I think the biggest thing is trying to help the patient discern which doctor is the best fit for them. I think as a user of ZocDoc, sometimes I'll be scrolling through and honestly, all the doctors kind of blend together because they all have like decent reviews and they all have these highlighted things that are like highly recommended, excellent wait time. And so I think anything the product team can do to help make that easier would improve the app experience a lot. One thing I'm noticing is that the app does work pretty well if you're looking for something immediate and you're less picky about the doctor that you're going to get. So it really does a great job of highlighting the upcoming appointments and making it very easy for you to schedule an appointment like tomorrow. So I think that's really great. So now that I'm done with the entire flow, I'm going to go through some visual design nits that I notice. So I'm noticing that the star is aligned to the bottom of the text, which I think is an interesting choice because then it adds an extra gap here and it looks like it's not intentional. It looks like a mistake. And so I think what I would do is I would align the text to the center of the star instead. And then I think the page will feel a little bit more balanced. Another thing I'm noting is that the visual hierarchy here between the date and the number of appointments is pretty weak. So this is only slightly bolder and this is slightly lighter. And so I think the hierarchy here could be stronger. I'm not sure if the appointments should be higher in weight or the date. I'd probably recommend having the date be higher in weight and then have the number of appointments be a little bit smaller or lighter because I personally don't care how many appointments are available. I'm excited if there's one appointment available and I, so I think like having the date be more clear might be useful. I'm not even sure if you need the number of appointments either. Maybe the fact that there is availability on that day is the most important thing and then you can simplify the amount of things on this page. Here's a summary of the framework I covered. One, set the context. Two, choose a flow and go into it in detail. If you have time, you can choose another flow and go into that in detail. Then finally, you can end with a critique of the design system as a whole. This is a really, really simple framework, but hopefully it helps add some structure to your app critiques. Again, the best way to improve an app critiques is to practice. And so I highly recommend grabbing a friend, opening Mobbin, and practicing these critiques on your own.